Hi there, I'm Belinda. Today I have a video for you that shows how to tear down fine art paper into smaller sizes with the least amount of waste. When you buy a full sheet of fine art paper, whether that be for drawing, painting, or printmaking, generally the size is 22 inches by 30 inches. And if you like to work small, like I do, you want to tear that down for maximum yield, minimal waste. So I have four PDFs that are downloadable for you to keep in your studio that show between 10 and 16 sheet yields from a 22 by 30 inch sheet of paper. I'm also gonna talk about how I tear my paper down, some tips related to understanding the front versus the back of your fine art paper, and then organization of it in your studio. So let's take a look. When I first started buying full sheets of fine art paper, I was a little stumped about how to break it down. I wanted to get the most out of each sheet without having to do the math every time I wanted to tear a large sheet down to smaller sizes. So in this example, I could get six eight by 11 sheets and four five by six sheets with very little waste. And this worked as well on printmaking paper, drawing paper, watercolor paper, whatever full sheets I was using, I created a series of templates like this. This one has a total of 11 sheets, six and a half by nine, six by nine, and six and a half by nine and a half. As a printmaker, if you are creating an edition with multiple prints, you'll wanna tear your paper down so that it matches the size of your plate. This is also something to consider if you have a gel plate and you make gel plate monotypes and monoprints. The size of the plate's never gonna change, so you can pre-tear your paper down so that it matches your plate and gives you a nice one inch margin all the way around. Traditional printmaking has margins around the plate or the print and they can vary from one to many inches wide. Since I use this plexiglass plate to make monotype prints, which is much like a jelly print, there's not gonna be any kind of carving in the surface of this plexiglass. I'll just use ink and print from it over and over again. I need lots of sheets of paper with, in this case, a one inch margin. So I need to tear down paper to seven by seven and three quarter inches. If you are curious at all about paper manufacture, historical as well as contemporary, you can look on YouTube for some video footage, which is really fascinating. Most fine art paper will have a watermark along one edge, and you can see it by putting the flashlight on your phone or holding the paper up to a window. The difference between front and back of fine art paper may be significant or barely visible, depending on things like chemistry, felt, the type of paper and the fibers used in the manufacturing process. The front side of fine art sheets are called the felt side and the back is called the wire side. In my experience with using Arsh's paper for printmaking and watercolor, I don't see that much difference between the front and the back side, but like I said, that'll depend on the manufacturer. So check it out up close and see which one you prefer to work on and then you can mark them appropriately so you can keep track once you break your paper down. So based on the fact that I want a one inch margin around this printmaking plate for monotypes, I'm marking the sheet with soft pencil so that I've got seven by seven and three quarter inch sheets to tear down and I'm using a pencil to mark those lines. I put the pencil in place because the ruler tends to move around a bit and I don't want to hunt for tiny little hash marks on the page. It's easier to just make light pencil marks, which will disappear once I either cut the paper, which you can do if you prefer, or tear the paper down to the sizes I want. In this video, I'm using a clear acrylic ruler that's traditionally used for sewing and quilting. But if you don't have a ruler and you're going to go and get one, what I would recommend is a stainless steel cork backed ruler because the cork on the back prevents slippage. And it's much easier to hold that cork down against paper because both the paper and the ruler have to be held steady in order for a successful tear to take place in a straight line. So notice I'm keeping my hands on either side of where the tear is taking place. You can practice this on copy paper until you get the feel for it. One hand holds both the ruler and the paper firmly in place while the other hand pulls the paper up firmly against the edge of the ruler. If you don't have a ruler at all, you can use your printmaking plate if you've got one that's made out of metal or one that's made out of plexiglass. 
Now, the debate over tearing versus cutting may have something to do with the fact that before the 19th century, paper was made by straining liquid from cotton pulp through a fine mesh screen stretched across a wooden frame that was called a decal. Some of the paper slurry would settle along the decal and dry in an uneven scallop pattern along the edges of the paper. That little deckled edge was a byproduct or proof that each sheet was handmade. Modern manufacturing made deckle edges obsolete, but with the new esteem associated with all things handmade, the deckle edge on fine art paper is something of a status symbol. Today, many papers are still handmade, and if you look on YouTube, find a channel that's called Discovery UK and watch their video, Handmade Paper, How It's Made. I'll put a link to it in the show more section underneath the video window. Now you can see here against this plate that once I've printed the sheet, I've got a nice one inch margin all the way around. Now some printmakers believe a torn decal around paper that's supporting a handmade print is a nod towards all parts of the art having handmade origins. You get to choose how much of a purist you'd like to be when either cutting or tearing multiple smaller sheets down from your 22 by 30 fine art paper. There are no rules other than the ones you choose for yourself on the matter. After you've torn your paper down, there's no way of knowing which paper it is. So it's wise to stack them up and list on the front of the sheet the manufacturer and weight of the paper so that you can keep track of what you've got. And then these little scraps that are your leftovers, instead of being uh, thrown away, if you're a printmaker, you can tear these down, fold them in half, and use them as little grippers to take a hold of your printmaking paper when your fingertips are inky or they've got graphite on them or they're dirty. And then you can just lift the paper either out of your soaking bath or off the press or off your plate um, with these little grippers and then just keep them in a pile as you're working so you never have to touch the paper and leave your fingerprints behind. Tearing or cutting paper down is one of those tasks that's kind of time consuming. And so if you are trying to get through creative block or you're not sure what to do in the studio, this is something that you can get done, label and organize your paper. And then by the time you are ready to make art, it's all ready for you. The paper's ready to go. So if you tear your paper, use a good stainless ruler with a cork back. Make sure you label your smaller pieces so that you can keep track of which piece of paper belongs to which manufacturer and is which weight. And if you tear your paper against a metal rule, keep your hands tracking to either side of the place where the tear is happening. Hold one hand on the ruler right next to the tear and pull the paper up against the edge of the ruler with the other hand. Don't forget to open up the show more section underneath the video window down below. That's where you'll find a link to the PDFs of the four paper yield templates that I showed in the video that you can download and keep for your own reference. That's it. I hope that was helpful. If it was, please leave me a thumbs up so I know how it was received. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section. I always answer and I love hearing from you. Happy painting, happy printmaking, happy drawing, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.